of maps, don't you? I just, I really dig how even in ancient times, somehow they managed to figure out sizes and proportions um, pretty close to scale for the world, a uh, world that was huge to them. What I'm going to try to do is I've got an example app here. I've got some data in and I want to put a map in it because, you know, I love maps and I'm guessing you'd like to map out your data too. So let's kind of work on that together. So I've got some patient data and I've got IDs, I've got addresses, I've got city, state, zip. I've even got latitude and longitude. And that's what maps need, right? I need at least a state or zips and latitude and longitude. So I'm going to create a map now. I'm going to take the map object, I'm going to bring it down, and it says add a dimension, just like any chart. I'm just going to pick a dimension. And I go into my map, and holy schmoly, it lets me do nothing. I can't do anything with this data right now. And this is probably the situation many of you have been in. You've been dying to try to do what you've seen in some other applications and you get to this point and you're just bewildered. You've got no idea where to go. Well, the truth behind mapping is that we need to give it some information. There's two types of maps that we can have. We can have point maps where we're going to put a dot on a map or we can have what are known as KML maps, which is basically the sizes and shapes of states or based on zip codes, regions. And we want to fill that in with some proportion of like what percentage of our patients in this zip code are readmitted. So there's a couple of things we have to do from the data side before we can actually do this. And this is probably where you needed the help. So if I look at my code, one of the things, if you load latitude and longitude, if you're using version 3.0 of ClickSense, it will automatically do this make point for you. If you had just plain old data or you're using existing apps where you've got latitude and longitude, you have to do this line of code yourself where you say geo make point, you give it the latitude and longitude and you can just say I want that to be the location. If I want to have the other type of a map, I've got to find a KML file somewhere. The file that I have is an interesting one and when I show it to you, you're going to understand it's the 50 states of, of the United States with Hawaii and Alaska below them in a more proportionate size. If you grab a KML map like off of a government site or something, you're going to see that Alaska is gigantic compared to the United States. And because of the space where Hawaii would normally really fit, the United States, the 48 um, contiguous states, kind of show up rather squeezed up and that's not really what we want so I've got this KML file that I load and you can see that it's got names internally for these fields and I'm going to rename them I name it to states and you're pretty sharp clicky by now you know I'm doing that because I wanted to join based on this state within this KML map it's got a point here and an area size and we'll see what we do so I'm going to reload my data now and now the data is loaded I should be able to now if I go to add dimension aha I can bring in and say hey I'd like to see um, my patient data and it's going to say how would you like to see this and I'm going to say I want to see it by the area and you'll see now it draws me that map. I'm going to shrink some of this up before. That was just to show you the data. And if you have patients across the United States, or if you've chosen to use a KML map that would be at a zip code based level, let's say instead, you would see something other than just this blue chunk. The blue is something that would be, we can create measures here that if we wanted to color these things differently, and we'll do that with the with the other map I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, you can set the colors. You can say, hey, I either want a single color. You could just change the color of that state if you choose to do that. Or you could say you want to do it by a dimension where you might have it colored differently depending on some values or things. So um, pretty easy to play with these properties, just like anything else. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what the point map would look like instead. So out of the box, instead of choosing an area, I said I wanted to show these patients based on points. 
And what this allows me to do, I can see it if I hover over that. I can look at this, and as we see this data, I've got the patient ID, and I've got the amount that they owe us. I can zoom in on these maps, just as you'd expect, and you'll see what that background looks like. That is just out of the box, very plain. I just chose to show points. Now, there's another variation you can do with this. I'm going to show you how to do this. You'll see this is colored, and these dots are different sizes. And the reason for that is I've changed the color, and I said I wanted you to do this by measure, so we'll take a look at what the measure is. And I can choose what this gradient is. When I'm looking at my data, I've got my point layer, but my measure is the account balance. And I've said I want you to use the expression for the bubble size. So we're on the first map. It was just plain. I got one dot size for everything. In this version of the map, I've turned on use the expression for bubble size. And because I have a measure in there, it can color code these things based on that value. There's also another version. If I were to look at this, the dots are nice, but the map is kind of plain. I get a very basic map. You can also take our map and make it look a little bit prettier. Um, so out of the box, it's just using a default map. On here, you'll see as I zoom in, you actually get some really nice inter interf an interface here. You get to see airports, you get to see road names like you would, but you're also getting color coding based on landscaping. If you zoom in on an area by water, things like that, you get those elements depicted in the map so that you can kind of tell, hey, there's railroad tracks here. Hey, there's a river running down the middle of this town. Um, maybe that's where my patients aren't coming from or something like that. And in order to get that, there's a couple of things you're going to do. Obviously, I still have these color coded and sized. But what I've done here is in the background, Instead of saying I want that map to be just an automatic map, I've given it information. I've given it this URL, and I'm going to post this in my blog. You'll be able to see what this actually is. Um, and you'll be able to open this example app and also pull this. Um, so this is just giving it another type of a map instead, and then pasting in information about how they would attribute it. Basically, how are you going to get down into um, the details. And so that's kind of the mapping that you've got your options of. The KML maps you can pull from multiple places. You'll find files for the United States. You'll find zip code based KML maps. You could have a KML map of just zips just in one particular state. Or you can create your own KML maps using various tools to have your regions identified. Um, so you can say, hey, here's the primary region that we're targeting for customers. Here's a secondary region. Here's a tertiary region for where you know you've got some overlap with competitors. And so you could build that KML. Or you can just have this type of a map where you're putting points on it and it may be showing the size based on proportions to what they owe you, um, their, their risk score for particular illnesses, however you want to do those expressions. Mapping's way too fun.